Logan, this uh, next question is for you. It's a question that's come in from a viewer, Sharon. Indigenous people have fought in Canon, uh, Canadian wars for our freedoms, but are still being treated unfairly and unequally. How can that be addressed? That's a great question, Sharon. I thank you so much for, for raising it. I, I think that um, it makes me want to, to even clarify some of the things that I said. Um, I think that as, as Tom has rightly pointed out that part of the values that we have in Canadian society that um, uh, we, we are thankful for and take for granted when we compare to other parts of the world that don't always have them have to do with the ways that um, rights have been, been championed and they have been won. Um, and, and that is in a sense uh, part of what makes this country different in some respects. However, I think that Sharon, your question brings up a good point that I think that those, those rights and values ultimately didn't just come from nowhere. And actually in many cases, they had to be, had to be championed for, they had to be fought and um, people had to be persuaded to see the ways in which they were not appreciating those, those values and rights that were there. And so I, I, I think that there is still certainly and needs to be room for pushing forward that the freedoms that, that others do not have, including in our own midst, in our own community. And I think that often those of us who are not part of a minority culture or a community like the indigenous community that's experienced so many hardships, that there is a need for us to turn our ears and to listen well to those who have experiences where freedom does not is not an adequate word to describe their experiences. That the lofty ideals of Canada sometimes aren't things that they don't always feel they participate in. And there is a need for that experience to be expressed and to be heard and listened to. Um, I think that in terms of um, this question of what, what does moving forward look like, I, I really appreciate what Tom has said about these universal values that need to be pointed to. And I, I think that when it comes to, to valuing um, the, the lived experiences of, of our indigenous community, it means that for those who don't share that experience, we might say, well, it's easier just not to listen. But I think at the same time, we're obviously missing something of the of the richness of our country, but in a much deeper level, there is something about human nature, human value that I see as a Christian that's embedded in each human being being made in God's image, that I think needs to be a bedrock that shapes the way we have these conversations, that someone can't just say, well, I don't really appreciate you you're sharing these things that make me uncomfortable, um, so you shouldn't. Instead, it needs to start from ground up and to say, actually, because you have dignity and value, um, your voice matters. And I think that across history, the, though the Christian faith has gotten some things wrong, I think that the fact that so many schools and orphanages and hospitals grew out of that conviction because people realized, hey, we, we have to care for these, these, these orphans because they, they have value and dignity. Um, and that was a, a big contrast to the ancient Roman world, for instance. I think that that is a sign that some kind of universality can help us in that direction. But I think it's something that is incumbent on the rest of us who maybe aren't in these more marginalized communities to be humble about, to listen to, and to say, if I really believe this is true, that there is such a thing as universal dignity and value, am I willing to, to let that challenge my views on how I engage and serve and listen to um, those who, who are saying their experience of freedom isn't what it should be? So I, I just so appreciate sharing your concern for, for this issue. And I, I'm all years to listen as well to how we can continue to do that better. Thank you, Logan. And we need to listen slowly. We need to listen slowly. And um, we need to just continue, Sharon, to have the same courage and bravery that you've demonstrated and to continually ask that question, to ask the hard questions and to not be afraid of dialoguing and entering into those conversations. We do need to do better.